In this video, we're going to see how to respond to particular errors caused by the user. Sometimes a user will try to access a resource that no longer exists, or sometimes or the same user might want to access a particular resource that she or he cannot access, that doesn't, she doesn't have the right privileges. So we will want to respond in some way to these actions and return an error so the user will be informed about these issues. In a previous step, we saw how to create basic routing. We were creating a route to manage particular authors. We had an index page that listed all the authors and whenever we clicked on one of these authors, we, will, we would see more information about them. The issue was that this route was generated dynamically and this author's last name has to exist somewhere. The question was what happens if we create an author that, for example, doesn't exist? I will just type anything. We will receive an error, a key error, because the particular author was being served from this author's info dictionary. And of course, if you try to access a dictionary with a, with a wrong key, it will raise a key error. We're going to see in this next step how to fix that. So I'm going to command the fifth example, we're going to go to the number six, raising custom errors, and we are going to see how this thing is supposed to work. If we try to access an author that doesn't exist, we want to raise a 404 error, right? Uh, an HTTP response with the code 404. If I inspect the console right here, we will see that the response we get is a 404 not found. How can we do that manually? We're going to see it in a second. Basically, we have to do the same handling as before. We gotta get the author's last name and we have to first check if our particular author, if the, if the author provided by the user is present in the dictionary that we have all our authors. Again, usually we will try to fetch this author's information from a database and the process is going to be basically the same. We will check if the author exists and if the author doesn't exist, we will just raise an error. The way to raise an error with Flask is by invoking this abort function with the particular code of the error that you want to raise. So in this case, I have imported the abort function. I will just raise a 404. I don't know if you have noticed this, but this page that you see right here is a custom page that we have created. This is not the default not found page created by Flask. Flask let us specify particular pages for errors that we want to respond. So for example, if we have a 404 or a 500 error, we will be able to create a particular page with the design that we want. Every major website will have a particular 404 or 500 error page. It's not just an ugly page. I'm going to show you first how is uh, how the default 404 page in Flask looks like. This is it. This is the default 404 page in Flask. I'm going to show you the how I have created our custom 404 page. I will show you again that it basically works. And the idea is that we will create an error handler for each one of the errors that we want to um, handle. All right. So every, every time a 404 error happens, we will, we will respond with this particular function. We can do pretty much whatever we want in here. We can, for example, create a, a login entry. We want, we want to log to somewhere saying like, look, someone is trying to access this particular page that doesn't exist. So we can, for example, keep track of orphan pages that we have lost. There are different things that we can do. And basically Flask let us create a view as the regular one we have right here. It will let us create a view to respond to particular errors. The rest is simple. We have already seen it. Um, I will just go to the 404 page and it's what we have right here, this oh no message we have here. I could, for example, do no way and I could just reload this and I will see the message no way. So again, Flask will let, let you create particular pages that you will use to respond to errors. 
something interesting to see here is that aside from the rendering the template, I am also returning a 404 integer. All right, what I am actually returning from this function, and this is not advanced, but you have to understand Python to, to see this, is we are returning a tuple, all right? A tuple is a particular data structure in the Python language. If you don't know about tuples, please go to our introduction and advanced Python course. In this case, we are returning a tuple, and Flask by default will let you return tuples to specify, aside from the content of the page that you want to return, the particular status code that you want to return. By default, Flask is specifying here a 200. So for example, if we go to our first index page right here, Flask is, as we are not providing a particular status code, Flask is interpreting that we are returning a 200 successful code. Finally, I want to show you another feature of the Flask routing mechanism. I don't know if you have noticed, but we have a special token that we have included before our parameter name. This will let us specify what data type we're expecting this parameter to be. And this will allow us uh, to be more concise and we will not have to specify particular error cases. So for example, right here, we're expecting a string. If the user is passing an integer, we should have to do some error handling and check if the parameter pass is an integer and then raise an error. That's a pretty common task in web development, so Flask let us forget about that error checking and it will let us, it will do it by ourselves, for us. So what we're going to do first is command this code right here. So we'll see how Flask helps us without having to specify a particular error checking. Then I'm going to say that I expect, for example, an integer. And when I try to access this author with a particular string, what I'm going to get is again the same error page. So I haven't included this because of course I have commented it out. I can remove it completely to show you. But Flask is taking care for us of returning that particular 404 error. What happens if I remove this? In this case, I will get again a key error because the uh, string that I'm passing doesn't exist. So again, at some particular moments, we will have to do special error handling. And that's fine because we the parameter pass is okay. In this case, it's a string, but the author doesn't exist. And we will, that is involved with the business logic of our application. But there are things that Flask can take care of by itself, like in this case, checking the type of the parameters that we are receiving. Again, Flask will save us a lot of time in these particular issues so we can create web pages in a more, in a more faster and quicker way. Finally, I want to show you a particular example that deals with authentication issues we have created another view with a different route that simulates an admin system. In this case, if I am trying to access the admin page that I have created with the route edit, right? So it's going to be something like author slash pod slash edit. What I'm going to receive is a 401 error message. And it's basically an unauthorized error message. So whenever you are trying to uh, keep a user away from a particular resource, you can just use the same abort function, but specifying the correct status code. Again, we're, show we're just showing you a few examples, 404, 401. There are many different types of errors. And what you have to know here is that by using the abort function, you can just use pretty much any error that you want. It's important to understand that all these errors will be uh, created based on the business logic of your application. So you will be the one deciding if a particular user can access this resource or if she cannot access this resource, and in that case, raising the error. Okay, so pay attention to the business logic. In these last two videos, we have combined the routing system with error handling to create a more robust and real and real life application. In the following videos, we're going to start digging into more advanced features of the Flask language and start having more control in our application. See you in the next one.